Welcome, everybody. I am Frank Data D. Lorenzo here with your weekly Quick Launch Live. Real excited today. I think we have a special treat. As you know, we keep these to approximately 15 minutes to get some quick tips and tricks. But I can give you a heads up today. I think we may run a bit over 20 minutes or so as we have some great content. To recap the last few sessions, we co covered the importance of a data model. Then we moved on to governance and security. The last two meetings, we covered different types of visualizations, such as waterfall, scatter charts, tree maps, uh, geo maps, and KPIs. And now today, we're going to talk about some best practices and how to build better charts. Designing reports in a visual uh, medium is different than just writing uh, text and row and column reports. So a few logistics. Please, please put your questions in the chat. If you're here live, put a one. If you watch on demand, put a two. If you'd like some more follow-up and discussion, put a three. And let us know where you're watching from today. It'll be fun. So let's move right to content. Today we've got a great guest speaker. He is a data analyst, highly skilled in creating visuals. I've seen his presentation, so I asked him to join us. Um, great business intelligence consultant. I often say uh, he's on our team. If I want to get smarter, raise my IQ, I go sit next to him in the office for about a week, uh, and I think my IQ goes up. Uh, I like the propeller head above me here. So my pleasure to introduce you to Mr. David Kettinger. David, take it away, and let's dazzle him. All right. Well, thank you, Frank, for that amazing introduction, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Frank, can you just verify that you can see my PowerPoint? We have your screen up, yep, and we already have... Good morning, Monica, Eric. We see Jill, Ben, uh, mysterious LinkedIn users. So thank you for joining us. All, All, right. All right, well, let's rock and roll. So this is a shortened presentation adapted from a presentation we did a year or two ago called Better Charts in an Hour. So change this now to Better Charts in 15 Minutes. And uh, if you want to geek out on all things data visualization, there is a link in the description for you to go and download the resources used um, today and also uh, view the, the longer video um, if you want to follow along and, and, and learn a little bit more about data visualization best practices. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. So the agenda is really just to cover a quick intro to data visualization and then we'll review the best practices by looking at a poorly designed dashboard and applying those best practices to it. And then we'll open it up for questions at the end. So data visualization is really any kind of graphical representation that lets you see what you normally can't see. Um, a good visualization sort of gives you superpowers and it gives you this x-ray vision into your data so that um, you can see through the noise to spot trends and outliers and, and, and patterns. So to illustrate this, here's a pretty typical tabular formatted report where we can see data in columns and rows. And if I asked you, okay, well, what continent had the biggest month over month growth in revenue, it'd probably take you a little, a little bit of time to go through all these numbers and try to spot that. But if we use a data visualization like a line chart, we can easily see that well, it looks like North America and between March and April had the biggest month over month growth in revenue. So as humans, we're highly visual creatures. So illustrating the data in this format is much more intuitive for us and easier for us to comprehend. Okay, so uh, we talked a little about, about what data visualization is. Let's talk about why it's important. And it's important because data visualization is really the bridge between the underlying data and information that your company uh, produces and the ability for managers to ultimately take some sort of action and, and make informed business decisions. So by mastering data visualization and a lot of the design elements within it, uh, you can really assist your users by creating more persuasive reports and if you become skilled at these design principles, then it'll ultimately encourage people to want to share and use your dashboards. All right, so with that being said, we have 14 best practices or rules that we are going to look at today. And instead of going through 
you know, a slideshow. We're going to actually do this in a demo format, sort of like a cooking show. Mm -hmm. And just to let you know that if you do want to have, take a look at this um, slideshow, we'll make it available to you in the presentation resources. And you can come and you can look at different bullets for each one of the rules, but we're not going to, we're not going to consume it that way in this presentation. So let's jump over to Power BI and let's, let's uh, begin. So here's a dashboard that was created for a fictitious electronics company. And you can see that uh, it has, you know, it's obviously made to illustrate what you shouldn't do, but a lot of these mistakes we do see, um, you know, almost every day uh, helping, helping customers and, and prospects. So the first rule that we're going to look at is to design for a target. So in this case, we can see we actually have information coming from HR and in the form of, of uh, count of employee and annual salary. We also have looks like revenue um, and, and gross profit information here as well. So we really want to make sure that we're targeting one uh, person or group or uh, re re reporting initiative with our dashboards to keep them focused. And we don't really want to try to cover everything in, in one view uh, because too much information leads to confusion and, and ultimately decreased value to the organization. So we're going to apply this rule here and we're going to remove the HR data from this dashboard. And now we're going to really focus on our creating a dashboard for our sales team and for um, our, 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 our management team here. And so the purpose of this will now be to look at sales performance across our retail stores. So the next uh, rule we're going to look at is keeping everything at a glance. And so this is important because you, you don't want to make your users scroll. You want to you want to make everything um, appear on a single page. So here you can see this dashboard, you know, you have to scroll to the bottom. There's also a lot of scrolling within the visualizations themselves that we should try to avoid. You can see this legend scrolls as well as this uh, table uh, visualization as well. So let's go ahead and click on add a glance and you can see that we've eliminated that scrolling um, dashboard. So now we have it all on one page and um, we can go from here. So let's look at the next one, which is going to be a combination of three and four. So rule three is uh, keep it simple. So we want to limit the use of distracting objects like images and borders and, and, and titles with um, unnecessary colors. Uh, we really want to um, remove you know, this background image that looks like to be a mall or something. It doesn't really provide any analytical value um, and you know, avoid using italics and uh, distracting font types. So let's go ahead and apply that one as, um, as well as number four, which is leave off the noise. So um, there's a concept in data visualization called having a, um, or the concept is a data to ink ratio. And you really want to strive for having a high data to ink ratio, which means that the ink used to print or display the dashboard uh, is used to display data instead of um, what, what maybe what some people call chart junk, which mm. uh, is ink on ink that doesn't isn't used to display uh, data, right? So these gauges, for example, has a lot of graphical features, but very, very little of it is actually used to display the data. So when we apply rules three and four, keep it simple and hide the noise, you can see that it starts to come together a little bit better. We've, we've gotten rid of that, that background image and just have a white header as well as um, this light gray background and started to clean up some of the, um, the, the titles and the visualization. Already left cluttered looking, David. I can see that clearly already as you move. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, so the next one that we're going to cover is rule five, and that is be consistent. So we want to be consistent with visual formatting, such as sizing and background colors and titles. And in addition to that, we also want to be consistent with the features that we put in within our dashboards. So uh, one of those could be a slicer or a, f a filter. Uh, that you add to the dashboard. So 
Um, and we want to make sure that we have consistent layouts and um, and design across these different filters so that when a user jumps from different views or different dashboards that we create, uh, they have a similar user experience and they don't have to learn how to interact with the dashboard all over again. Uh, we also want to be consistent with our chart type selection. So you can see here that we have looks like three different gauges on this dashboard, but this is a different visual than this is. So uh, maybe we were consistent in um, our visualization choices as well, if, if that is possible. So let's go ahead and apply this rule. And now we can see we've actually changed these visualizations to have um, uh, to, or to be the same gauge visual and we've also uh, changed the colors up here a bit and um, our chart titles are starting to come together as well so let's go ahead and jump to rule number six which is start your axes from zero so this is important because we don't want we want to make our dashboards as easily digestible as possible and so if we start you know, if we look at this visual here, you can see that it looks like the East doesn't have any sales uh, for this time period. But if we um, change the axis to start from zero instead of half a million, you'll notice that the, the uh, let me get rid of this. Uh, you'll notice that the East does have actually uh, has has some sales in it. So um, now we're more consistent across our, our visualizations starting from zero like up here. So keep that in mind as you're as you're creating visualizations. Uh, the next step we want to cover is rule number seven and that is be clear. So um, we want to give our dashboards a clear title. So in this case company performance may not be the best choice. So we can look at how we can uh, be a little clearer on that. We also want to um, explain what colors mean. So if you need to, you can use a legend for that. Uh, you also want to explain what acronyms mean. So in this case, we ha you have GP up here. Maybe some users don't know what GP means, so we could be a little clearer there. And then we also want to be clear um, with our visual titles. So you can see this one doesn't have a visual title. So what is this illustrating or you know, what is this, what's the message that we're trying to convey here? So when we click on this one, you can see we've taken those steps. Now we're looking at a sales overview dashboard. We've, we've, we've um, articulated our acronym meanings and all of our charts now have titles. So this is starting to um, starting to come together for us. Mm -hmm. So that takes us now to rule number eight, which is design dashboards and not reports. So uh, we don't want to use tables in dashboards unless absolutely necessary. So you can see that here we still have a table in here. And um, in business intelligence, you know, the reports are really the detailed presentation of the underlying data um, that use tables. And dashboards are going to be your more aggregated and interactive uh, display of the data that, again, it helps really helps your users spot those trends and, and outliers and patterns within within the, within the data more easily. So let's go ahead and click on that one. And now you'll see instead of having that table, we actually change this to a bar chart and have it sorted in descending um, fashion so that we can quickly see who our top performing customers are. All right, so that takes us now to an important one, which is choose the right visuals. So this one is so important that we actually created a tool that is also included in the presentation resources called our visuals guide. And this can help you um, if you're trying to determine what the best um, visualization is. This was designed for users that use Power BI, uh, but certainly applies to any modern data analytics platform. And here you just want to click on the type of analysis that you're trying to do. So if I'm trying to, for instance, compare um, values across different dimensions, then I can click on that. And you can see now that I have a list of available visualizations and they are uh, sorted in most recommended to least recommended within that category. So here we can see that the clustered bar chart is the um, best visualization that we can use. And then if you want to, you can also check out custom visuals. I don't have time to cover that now, but um, if you're familiar with that, you can you can switch between standard and custom visuals as well. 
All right, so let's jump back over here to our uh, dashboard that we're working on. And let's talk a little bit about the visualization choice here. So a gauge, we talked about data to ink ratio. This isn't the best, uh, it's, it isn't the best visual for a business dashboard. It's great for cars, but uh, we can do better in, in business intelligence. Um, we also really pie charts, they, they're not the best visualizations to use. They are, they take up a lot of space and they're hard to interpret here. I have to, I have to look at the legend and then look at the corresponding color. So it's, it's, it's just not the most intuitive. Um, and it also is hard to decipher the, the difference in the slices, right? So is, is this one really that much bigger than, than this one and by how much, right? So uh, we can, we can do better here. And similarly with tree maps or, or you know, the, if you have a lot of values, it becomes very hard to, um, to determine what, what we're looking at and the values within. So let's go ahead and uh, jump down here to choose the right visuals. And you can see we've switched up this quite a bit here. We've used a lot utilizing line charts to show our trends instead of uh, our trend over time instead of bar charts, which is a better selection. Uh, we also are now using a waterfall chart to uh, to show our variances and We've consolidated a lot of our gauges and KPIs into a um, in, in, into two two different visuals instead of um, many different visuals. We've also changed up our pie chart as well. So this is looking good, and we're ready to jump down to rule number ten, which is shorten the numbers. So you can see here in our first sales amount. Uh, KPI here, we have a lot going on. We have like, what is that? Six different um, numeric values here. And sim same with our um, our data labels down here in this chart. So we really wanna keep our numbers to three or four integers in length at most. And um, if, if you need to see precise data, you can give your users that option. So in this case, I could, you know, I could click on this and say, uh, show as table, and then I can see the, the actual values um, as well if I need to see the, the precise number. So let's go ahead and click on number 10. And, and you can see here that it's much more digestible uh, in, in a smaller number format. All right, so I'm gonna jump to the next one, which is show context. And this is another important one. So when you show a measure value, such as sales amount, you should always try to show a comparative value so that it's more informative. And this could be um, compared to prior period, to a budget or any other target value. And you should also try to use uh, positive and negative colors or, or shapes to indicate the performance to that comparative value. Um, it's also a good practice to show the variance or, or variance percent to comparison as well. So we'll click on 11 here and see that rule applied. So now we can see we're actually comparing sales amount to prior year and it looks like we're up by 13% and we're indicating that um, that increase in a green color. So um, you can see that um, it's much more useful than just showing the sales amount alone. Uh, we also have um, comparative values down here in our uh, bullet charts. So we can see that, um, you know, we're comparing sales amount to our target of, of prior year and indicating whether it's uh, above or below that in, in with our different sentiment colors here. Okay. So let's move on to the next one, which is we really want to be careful of how we use spacing, margin, and alignment. And this mm -hmm. kind of relates back to the Gestalt principles of proximity and spacing um, for design, which we cover in our more in-depth um, webinar that I pointed you to at the beginning. But, um, you know, most humans in the world, we read top to bottom and left to right. So we want to keep that in mind as we're designing our our um, report so that we keep our most important chart elements uh, on the left and in, 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 in the upper section of the, of the dashboard. Um, we also want to try to group similar visualizations together and always, always, always use 
the same spacing and margin between report elements. So you can see that when we apply this one, it's really, I mean, that one's probably the easiest one for people to comprehend and implement, uh, but you'd be surprised at how many people neglect that. But you can see just right off the bat, by using this um, rule, it becomes way easier to uh, interpret and, and, and digest this information. So, um, yeah, we're coming together. We only have two more left. And the next one is going to be rule 13, which is use colors wisely. So you really want to use colors carefully because they can be distracting to users. And colors also cause emotions. So you want to save colors like red and green for increases and, and decreases in the data. And be intentional with the different types of colors that you use. So it looks like in most of our charts here, we have this like bluish green color that I'm not wild about and could confuse users um, to think that it's, it's some sort of sentiment color. So if I click on 13 here, you can see that I've um, made all of these different, um, I've made all of these different charts use a standard blue unless there is some sort of um, need for another color, right? So in this case, we have our red and green showing ups and downs or increases and decreases. And then uh, we have this yellow to show a um, our gross profit percent as a data point in this chart. Uh, and then other than that, we really are very intentional with the use of colors here. All right, so the last one we have here is um, one that I think is often overlooked but is important, and that is to be mindful of how you configure your visual interactions on this uh, on, on your dashboard. So if I click on, say, one of these channels here, retail, you can see that it's going to filter down all of the other charts on the in the dashboard. Uh, same with our you know clicking over here on one of our product groups. So this seems to be working fine, and this is. Um, and this is good, but if I come up here to, let's say, period number, and I click on period six, you can see that it's actually filtering down my trend chart to only show me period six or June, which is doing what you, you know, the, the program's doing what you we're telling it to, but it might not be the best uh, consumer experience. So if we edit our interaction, we can turn the interaction off between this slicer and this the visualization here. And when we do that, you can see that I can actually come in here and select different months and it won't change uh, this particular trend chart, but it'll change all the other ones. So this is a, you know, a better experience and um, ultimately leads to better adoption of, of your uh, data analytics content. All right, so we've <laughs> covered a lot of ground here in the last few minutes and our final sales over report here is now um, is now complete and again this is available in the presentation resources so if you're interested in, 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 in walking through this or using this as a template or reference you you have this file available to you as well David um, a phenomenal run through in such a short period of time and could you do me a favor and go from the very first bad slide and then show this one Sure. Yeah. So if we start at here at our bad practices, you can see that we have quite a lot going on. But after applying these these different rules, you can see that um, you know it's w within a few steps you can you can really create some powerful professional looking designs. Much cleaner, more impactful. We did just scratch the surface. So even though David covered a lot, I mean, there's uh, so many visuals out there. One tool I think of value is when David mentioned the types of visualizations like KPIs, comparisons. Uh, so spend a little time on this and kind of, this is excellent right here. Thank you, David. And you can learn a bit more about uh, uh, what's the best charts to use. Cause again, visualizing data is impactful, uh, much more powerful, but it takes a different skill set that you want to improve to create those visuals. And Power BI gives you a, a marketplace of visuals you can you can uh, reach out to. So there's a ton that you can do. And uh, hopefully we gave you, you know, a, a good amount of info to get started. I'm going to share again. Here it is. You see it on the screen. That's the link to the presentations also there. We have more educational content. It's a link for a free trial. If uh, you're on JD Edwards, Viewpoint Vista, NetSuite, Salesforce, we can talk about that. Uh, next week, 
uh, at 8 o'clock Thursday. We're going to dive into, I think it was number eight on David's uh, list of best practices, and that's what are some of the nuances and differences between a report and a dashboard? What does each give you? Because that, that question comes up a lot. So thank you for spending some extra time with us today. I hope you got some value from this. A big thank you to my colleague, David Kettinger, for joining us. We are Preferred Strategies. We are all about your data. Remember, this will be on demand if you'd like to watch later. Thank you for your time today. David, great job. Thanks, Ryan. Thank See you, everyone. Bye, everybody.